Hello everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. Today, I'm gonna to go through my full stock video process. What I mean by that is from start to finish, from research and planning, through shooting, editing, uploading, I'm gonna go through the whole lot. I am gonna be uploading to POM5 specifically, however, hopefully, it doesn't necessarily matter too much if you're uploading to all different kinds of stock sites. I am actually pretty excited today to share some of the stuff that I've done. This has been a bit of an inspiration and a spawn for a lot of different projects for myself and this channel, and can you guess? I'm a little bit excited, so let's just get started. First of all, preparation. So, what can we do to plan? Turns out, POM5 might be able to help you with this. Come to POM5, all the way to the bottom, click on Contributor Portal. There are a few different ways in which POM5 can help you out with giving you some inspiration. Firstly, there are the shoot briefs or creative briefs, which is where POM5 themselves have come up with an idea of something for you to shoot and have kind of given you some examples of the type of thing they're looking for. There are buyer requests, so this is where some of the buyers are from POM5 have asked for specific things. So for example, we've got International Women's Day, Ramadan, stuff like that. A lot of the time that will be date or season specific. They also have things like the top categories, along with some pro tips, which might go into a little bit more detail about specific ways to either make your content better or to maybe make more money from your content. One of the pages that they have that will help you do this is the data and trends page which if you come on here, you go down to, for example, footage, and it will show you the best-selling images of the month or year before. If you scroll down to the bottom, they've also got trending searches alongside top search terms. And this is how I came up with the idea for this particular video. So what quite high searches were nature, abstract, and agriculture. That gave me the inspiration for what I'm gonna go film. So I would recommend you come on here, see what's selling, and getting some ideas for are there general things that sell quite well, whether it be something that's quite specific, a type of filmmaking, a type of shot, a type of subject matter, let it inspire you for a way in which you might make something that hopefully will stand out and make you some money. And lastly, once you've had that initial idea, the thing you can do to kind of cement that, and again, this works across various different types of platform, is to come on and do a search for what it is that you're thinking about shooting. So for example, I'm gonna shoot winter harvesting. So that's why we're gonna see what there is already online. As you can see here, to me, this is quite a good sign because although there are winter related subject matters, for example, kale, and for example, vegetables that you do harvest in winter, there are things that are clearly not winter harvesting. For example, this shot of the two ladies, that's clearly summer, springtime. There are things like peppers and hot climate fruits and vegetables, which again, that's not right. So therefore, what I've got in my head of going out and filming in winter when things have got ice on them, stuff like that, that's gonna be a bit different. That's gonna be a bit abstract. So overall, preparation. Do a bit of research. Whatever platform that is that you're uploading to, go on there, see if there's any things that that platform is specifically looking for see what's on there already, and also maybe see if there are any things that tell you the type of search term that is popular. Hopefully from that, you'll have your idea and you'll be ready to start filming. For today's project, I'm not gonna film it in the caravan. I need to get outside. So this is why I've come to Glassbren. But firstly, Abel's gonna introduce himself. Hi, I'm Abel and we're here at Glassbren uh, where I grow vegetables for my community uh, and a community supported agriculture veg box scheme. When you think of harvesting and think of gardening and growing, you think of spring and summer and lovely uh, times of year, not when everything is covered in ice. So in essence, that's what makes this a bit abstract. I've also got some plans for the ways in which I'm gonna shoot. So things like time-lapse, maybe some stop animation type stuff. And I've also got a pretty fun idea that I will keep secret for now. I think today is all about just kind of having fun and getting the kind of standard stuff that you think people want, but also trying to push that boundary a little bit and uh, think outside the box. We've arrived first thing in the morning, got the camera set up, but I just want to get some really nice B-roll under my belt. So we'll do that first. Okay, I just stopped the video there. Remember when I said I was really excited about some of the things that I'm gonna show in this video? This is one of those. If you're not subscribed already, please hit the like button, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you're into farming and especially farming on a small scale, Abel, Glassbren, they are an amazing resource. They do CSA, if you've not heard of that, a community supported agriculture. Search it, fascinating stuff, and a great way to get 
fresh, organic, amazing local vegetables and something that in future, myself and Alicia might do ourselves. Again, that's, that's way into the future, but this video is one of the starting blocks that are gonna then start a lot of different projects that we've got planned, coming up with Abel and Glassbren throughout the year and hopefully in the years to come. But first of all, back to this video. So I was there to film stock video stuff first. However, I knew that I was gonna also add some of this footage into future courses, future promotion promos that I'm doing for Glassbren, as well as future videos for the channel. So have those things in mind. If it's just for stock, then that's only one way that you can make use of that footage. Try and have as many different fingers, <laughs> dirty little fingers <laughs> in dirty little pies as possible. I film on a Panasonic S1H. I have, this is the Canon 16 35. I've also got a Zeiss 50 mil and a Zeiss 135 mil. Most of what I filmed on that day was handheld. I did film some on a Ronin that I've got. Personally, I don't always film on a tripod unless I'm in it or doing something. I try and add a little bit of movement there. So very basic. You can be as basic or as complicated as you want. You can have rigs and steady cams and big cameras, or you can have your phone and you can just be out there like this. Yes, it is the quality of what you capture. And what I mean by that is the lighting, the composition, how steady it is, and is it smooth and slow motion maybe. But I wouldn't get bogged down by that. If you get a brilliant shot of a dragon on your mobile phone, compared to not getting the shot on a red camera with 80 grand's worth of cook lenses on there, well, surely that's better shot to get, isn't it? I will show you some of the footage now of how I shoot. Sometimes I look very weird because in essence, I'm kind of crouched down like this. I always used to take the mickey out of a guy that I work with. I used to always film like, film like this. And he'd be looking down at the screen and the camera's looking this way, but he's kind of not really paying attention. And one of the reasons that you might look weird is what I'm trying to do, and I'm, I'm hoping that my uh, behind the scenes footage show this, is I'm trying to be as stable as possible. Generally, that's securing your body in some kind of shape or form. That might be kneeling down, that might be standing in a way that enables you to lean against a wall or something like this. And then if you can, try and support your arms in another way as well. But if you can't support your arms, you know you can't lean on something, tuck them in because then you're securing this bit your hands will stay steadier if you're tucked in like this. So that's why sometimes I'll be like this, or you'll see me bent over because my hands are tucked in and I'm leaning like this. I'm not doing it, I'm just kind of, kind of like this. You can't see, <laughs> I can't do it in the caravan, but you see, hopefully in the examples, if I lean over and you're just slowly rocking, basically from one side to the other, try not to step, because as soon as you step, you'll move. And then in doing that, you create this really nice, smooth shot. Another thing I recommend is to shoot in slow motion because when you're doing shots like this that are just generic B-roll shots and you're trying to do something that's like a steady cam kind of glider type shot, being able to slow that down instantly makes that shot look nicer because there's less shake in it. I'll also get into, you can use warp stabilizer and something like that in the edit, but I'll get into that in a bit. We had our list of a few different scenarios. So they were in this example, harvesting kale, some walking around um, his general plot, tipping out the compost and for a big idea that I had at the end, some walking and doing some journal writing in a polytunnel. So not that many. However, I was flexible as the day went on. I'll give you a prime example of this. When we were doing the compost, we thought, right, I'll put some nice juicy worms on this specific bit and then I will set myself up, ready to get this beautiful shot of a robin coming in, landing, wonk, taking the stuff out. Oh. What follows is myself and Abel sat there for 10 minutes waiting for the robin to land in the specific place that I wanted it to. Did it? No. Short word. No, no, it did not. So the robin is like right next to us this whole time having to look around the compost. Not the big pile of worms that we've made for it, the other worms that are in and about. So I had to make that decision in the moment to just scrap that idea and just move around and just start filming and just following the robbing around, trying not to disturb it and trying to get to the shots that I could. What resulted is a mixture of different shots of the robin and also one, just one, but one shot that I am pretty pleased with. It's a wow kind of shot. So overall, what did I do? Firstly, 
I tried to tell a story with as many different wide, mid, close, different types of shots, maybe even different formats as possible. Examples of different formats were things like a time lapse that we tried, that worked really well, a stop motion sequence that we tried, sadly that didn't work as well. A little reminder here for me to set the focus right because I set it in the wrong place as well as my main most exciting idea which was to record something that I was going to then lay animation over the top of later on. So therefore covering the most basic stuff that you think most people are going to want as well as one or two different ideas that are a bit abstract, maybe take a bit more time but hopefully will get more eyes on them, will stand out more and will make you more money. Next, editing. So I do this in Adobe Premiere Pro. You might use something different, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Open the files, put them into your timeline. I use the same sequence settings as the footage itself, other than I change the sequence settings to make sure they're 16 by nine because this specific camera in 4K doesn't shoot 16 by nine, it's slightly bigger than that. 25 frames a second as well. Then I go through all the footage, cut everything down, and generally I try and aim for around 10 to 15 seconds, I think is kind of a sweet spot for a stock shot. Personally though, I don't think it matters too much if it goes over that. For example, if it's something that maybe can be speed ramped, then it's okay if it's longer than 30 seconds. Then. Warp stabilizer is your best friend, especially if you're like me and you shoot handheld. Yes, I shoot at 50 frames a second when I'm shooting in 4K and I can also shoot at 100 frames in 1080. So I slow them down and also I'll then warp stabilize. Yes, you generally have to pretty much have got it bang on when you first do it. If you're kind of all over the place, then it's not gonna fix that. But if you're just, just ever so slightly like jerky and ever so slightly joggy, it should fix that. Then color correction. Big tip would be don't go too crazy with the grade. Yes, you wanna correct it. You wanna make it look normal. You want skin tones to look normal. You want it to make it to look how it did to your eye when you filmed it. What you wanna do is make it fundamentally easy for someone who buys it to then make a new grade over the top of your footage. Then after you've done that grade, now I can bring you on to the really exciting shot. Now you could maybe try something that is a bit different. For this example, what I did, it was something I've done in the past as part of this project that I did with Jamie at Hal Bushcraft that was kind of cyberpunk feel and it was sort of digital dystopia and I don't know. But what I loved doing was making these shots where this stuff was all around him. With that in mind, alongside some of the documentaries that I've done, I've been trying to visually create journals and kind of make journals come to life. Quick side note, something that you can do is go and watch one of the documentaries that I've made on this channel. They're something that is real, a real passion project for me. Example of this is a video that I made with Tom Langhorn or Fan Dabby Dozy as you might know him filming fight scenes and stuff like that, and oh, it was amazing. Another one is Brian from Journeyman Handcrafts. He made me this ultimate kind of bushcraft camera bag, and I made a documentary about him, as well as then the journey of making the bag. I can't say that I just wanna make something and put it out there and I'll just forget about it, because I do want people to see it, you know? I, I, I like creating, and obviously part of creating is sharing it with people, and, and hopefully having them get enjoyment out of it. So. I really appreciate it if you could go and have a watch of the documentaries that I've made. Links for those will be at the end of the video. So what brings me back from those documentaries, I made some animations about journals and kind of journals coming to life. And mixed that with the idea that I did with Jamie, I thought, oh, what if Abel was writing within the polytunnel, which at this time of year was empty. So then there was loads of space up above him, unlike when we filmed in the year and it was full of blooming tomatoes, beautiful looking, but wouldn't have worked, this idea wouldn't have worked then. What if while he's writing, the journal just kind of comes to life around him? So, cue, ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, cue epic time-lapse of me editing now. Yeah, that's right, seven hours for one shot. I ended up doing four different shots. So this probably took me three to four days worth of full time 
rotoscoping and 3D tracking and then making the animations to make these clips. With these shots, I'm gonna put the price up and see if they sell, fingers crossed, hopefully. <laughs> now, once you've got everything edited, the settings that I generally use for this is H.264, make sure it's 25 frames, 4K, not one pass, it's two pass, because that's better quality. The bit rate never lower than 50. If it's 1080, then it has 50 is the highest it can be. And if it's in 4K, I normally do 70 to 100. Ideally, you could use something like Media Encoder. You put them all in, set them to batch export. Boom, there you go, go and have a cup of tea, sorted. If you are like myself, and you have an S1H, and you have the downloaded LUTs from Panasonic that you've put through Adobe Premiere, you can't do that because for some reason, when you go from Premiere to Media Encoder, it doesn't like the LUT, so basically subtracts the LUT off of your clip. So I have to go through and export every single one, one at a time. Not the worst thing in the world, but yeah, hopefully you don't have to do that too. Now, uploading. Come on to POM5. Uploads. Upload new file. Choose files. You can use an FTP. Personally, I've never used an FTP, so if you have, please comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on using an FTP. Personally, the reason I upload in this manner is just because I find it easier. It's similar to YouTube and things like that. Whereas I tried FTP once or twice and things just didn't seem to work properly and I couldn't figure out why. So if you're doing it like this, find what you want, click, then you will see it uploads. You'll come onto this page, make sure that needs edits is highlighted. You'll see it's been given an ID and a title. The title is obviously what you named it. To start tagging and different things, I would recommend, first of all, you need to make your own template. So if you go up here, go to templates, depending on whether that's 1080 or 4K, then you select the one that you need to. Then you go on, make new template. You've got your template name, that you definitely need to call it, then I personally wouldn't title it. I wouldn't make a description either because that's gonna be specific that you'll do to your video. The main thing is keywords because this is where what I would generally do is create a template. So for example, like I'm going to do today for Glass Bren, it's got about 40 different keywords that I've done some research. For example, using a site like dropstock.io, you add about 40 and then you leave, because it's up to 50 that you can do on POM5, you leave 10 for kind of adding in some that are specific to the shot that you're doing. Okay, come back to my uploads. This is where you can add back in your template. You can also pick the thumbnail, add your title, add your description, change anything else, add any keywords that you might want that are extra to your template. Then potentially you wanna add it to a collection. Sometimes you might make a collection specifically for that thing, or you add a collection that you've already got. For example, I've got like a hyperlapse and a time-lapse collection, so I'd add it to that. What I would normally do then is click Save Changes. You can save and submit for review, but you might need to add a few more things to that. Plus, I like to send it all in one go, so I normally just click Save Changes. Once you've done that with all of the different ones, if you need to add an actor release form, you do so. To add an actor release form, it's the same as adding a new template, and then you add all your actor release forms, select all your clips, and then boom, submit. And that's it. That is everything. If there's anything I've missed, please comment down below if you can help me out. And as well, please like, subscribe, share, all of that kind of stuff. And hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you've learned something from it. Now, get out there, go and shoot some stock footage and earn yourself some money. And well, most importantly, have fun, go create, enjoy. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Echo's Bart is here. She's really excited, just as excited as I am. I am actually pretty excited today. <laughs> if you can see <laughs> the look I'm getting from Echo right now, this is how excited Echo is right now. Oh, can't contain herself. <laughs>